Southern California has a Mediterranean climate with warm summers and mild winters. A variety of ecosystems from mountains to plains to coastal areas can be found. These climates provided a variety of food sources throughout the year. The mountain valleys and plains provided deer, sage, acorns, pine nuts, and various plants and animals. Wetlands along the coast provided birds, shellfish, rays, and of course, fishing was carried out in the open water. The Gabrielino had a thriving economy that used shells as currency. Gabrielino villages traded with other villages and neighboring tribes. Each of the environments, mountain, plain, coastal, and island, provided various items that could be traded. Catalina Island was a prime source of soapstone, which was carved into a variety of shapes. Items carved from soapstone have been found throughout Southern California, suggesting it was a prized commodity. What did a Gabrielino village look like? Most Gabrielino structures were dome-shaped thatched huts of various sizes. These ranged from family dwellings to large structures that held 50 people at a time. The center of each village was a ceremonial center called a yovar. It was a circular area bound by a fence and open to the sky. In the middle was an altar strewn about with feathers left over from the sacrifice of birds. Each Gabrielino person belonged to a lineage which descended through the person's father. The tribe was made up of many different lineages. All members of a lineage tended to live together and render each other aid. Each lineage was further divided into two groups, one called coyote and the other called wildcat. Anthropologists call this division of related people a moiety. Important holidays required the moieties to come together to celebrate, where food and gifts were shared. The leader of the largest or oldest lineage in a village would be the tamyar, or chief of the village. The tamyar was succeeded by his son, or eldest male relative. Some tamyars could be the chief of several villages, probably happening when the Tamyar's lineage grew large enough to start a new community. One duty of the Tamyar was to distribute surplus food to those in need. Hunters and fishers would not eat any of the food they themselves caught. A portion of each catch or hunt would be given to the Tamyar. A Tamyar could be punished by his people with death if the chief was not generous or fair in food distribution. This suggests how the fate of Wiut served as a warning for unpopular leaders. The Tamyar represented the village in relations with other communities, including neighboring tribes. The Tamyar would cement good relations with neighbors by the exchange of gifts, often artistic items. Beads made from seashells were commonly used. Staffs decorated with feathers were prized gifts. The Tamyar would have multiple wives, and marrying the daughter of a neighboring chief was one way to establish allies. The Tamyar would live with his family close to the Yovar. Each village had a council of elders who would be the leading member of each lineage present in a village. Some council members had specific duties, often dealing with specific rituals. For example, one official called a Maanet oversaw a drink called Maanet made from the Detura plant, which had hallucinogenic properties. The Paksa was a treasurer and second in command after the Tamyar. The council was largely or completely male and membership was descended from father to son. The Gabrielino also had shamans who played an important role. The Gabrielino connected each facet of life to supernatural beings and good relations with such beings was vital to the tribe's prosperity. Among the abilities of the shamans were the power to divine the future, change into animal form, particularly bears, as well as control of various natural phenomena. They were said to live 200 to 300 years and had enough physical strength to bend trees. Some were said to be able to calm rough seas with a command. Shamans had a sort of professional association that cut across all lineages. 
Shamanic associations decided who could be trained to become shamans and punished those who abused their power. Shamans were often the children of shamans, but sometimes individuals had a dream that called them to the profession. The shaman trainee went through arduous trials at the hands of the shaman and at the hands of various supernatural entities. Shamans often had a guardian spirit, which could be an animal, but could also be a place, a plant, or a natural phenomenon. Jimson weed, the common name for a plant belonging to the Detura family, was used for its hallucinogenic properties. Shamans used this plant to contact supernatural beings, although tobacco was also used for this. Shamans had many duties. They were supposed to maintain moral order, partially by their own example. They held knowledge of the natural world, and also had knowledge of astronomy, and had both a solar and lunar calendar to keep track of important dates. Gabrielino society was stratified. There was an elite class, a middle class, and a sort of commoner class. The elite class included the Tamyar, the shaman, and the council of elders. They often married into each other's families, strengthening class ties. They accumulated wealth by payment for services such as healing rituals. They also spoke a particular dialect of the Gabrielino language. Like the Tamyar, they had larger dwellings near the Yovar. The elite were the only ones who knew certain sacred rituals, which were vital for gaining favor with beings such as Chengdianch and Gench. The middle class consisted of artisans who were skilled at making items from stone, wood, bone, and fur. Very skilled artisans might have members of the elite as a patron. The commoners were individuals with no special skills or connections. The artisans also had professional associations, which included people across lineages. These associations encouraged trade between villages. The Gabrielino culture had many rituals marking important dates throughout the year, such as the solstices. Funerals and coming-of-age ceremonies would also be held. These ceremonies sometimes involved giving away various items, or the ritual destruction of items. In economic terms, this created a constant market for new items, so artisans would constantly be working. While shamans police their own, the rest of society looked to the Tamyar to dispense justice. If a crime was committed, the Tamyar would judge the case. If the penalty was death, the entire village was instructed to find and execute the guilty party. Individuals could find sanctuary if they could get to the Yovar. They could then leave the settlement under the protection of Chengechengench. However, their family would be shunned, and one assumes it would be hard to find another village. Today, the state of California recognizes the Gabrielino group based in modern San Gabriel, where the original mission still stands. The federal government has not recognized the tribe. Mm -hmm.